Hello all and welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a historical customer and textile conservator in training. And today I just wanted to hang out with you guys as I do a task that I've been putting off for far too long. So, as some of you may know, if you watched my summer vlog, I moved to New York City at the end of August and I'm in this cozy little one bedroom apartment, which means that I need to be very organized most of the time or else it just becomes utter chaos in here. So I, because I'm a historical customer, because I am a academic, because I'm a textile conservator, I have a lot of reference books. By a lot, I mean probably nearing the 250 mark. I managed to move all of them from Delaware and I just sort of bought a bookshelf and put them in here. I have not organized them at all and the couple of times that I've actually gone to my reference books to look something up, I have not been able to find anything. So like I did in Delaware, was it almost two years ago now, I'm going to organize this bookshelf and I'm going to bring you along and I'm going to talk about some of my favorite books that I have in here, um, what they could be good for. I have a really old video, it's like one of my first videos I ever filmed, about my book recommendations. I really need to do an update about that, but today we're just going to go through this bookshelf and it's mostly historical fashion and textile books and a couple of fiction things rolling around but yeah let's organize this so this is what the bookshelf looks like currently it's very tall and we have one two three four five six rows of books you can see wow lots of lots of books and they are in no particular order Obviously the ones up there are the the ones up here are the tall ones, so those are probably gonna have to stay up there in some order. Um, and then if I swing you around here. Oh little hiding cow. We also have some books in this other bookshelf as well. So I am going to take everything out. Oh, oh okay. So I'm gonna take everything out and organize things. So let's get going to that. This is a lot of books. <laughs> uh, one of these days, I really want to make a like full. Oh man, this is yeah. Um, one of these days, I hope to make like a full catalog of all of these. Put up on my website. Um, that might happen never because that is a lot of work. Although I did do it one time when I was in junior high. I cataloged all my books over spring break because that's the kind of nerd I am. But I want to organize these roughly by category. What's going to help me the most in being able to find stuff in my bookshelf is honestly intentionally putting it there and remembering where I put it because earlier when I was looking for books, I literally just tossed these in the shelves as quickly as possible because moving into this apartment took like almost a month because I had to order furniture and then it would like come and then it would come in stages and so I just like wanted to get these boxes off of my floor as fast as possible. So really being intentional in where I put these books is going to be helpful. As you can see, there's a lot of different kind of types and sizes of books, so some books will have to go back in specific places because they're just too large. For instance, I have that book right there, Fashion Plates, it's big, it's heavy, and it's staying there because it's not going to fit anywhere else, and I don't feel like moving it, so that is staying right there. Um, this tower right here is honestly mostly book storage, although I have records and my knitting supplies, so let's start categorizing these books and I can talk through as we go. So I think the first category that I have pretty well already parsed out are these books. These are my 19th and 20th century sewing and like deportment manuals. So this is uh, the arts of costume and personal appearance and then I've like got New Encyclopedia of Modern Sewing. I just pick these up whenever I can get my hands on them because they are really interesting to look through. This is Lippincott's Home Manuals Clothing for Women. This is from the early 20th century. So I just pick these up whenever I can. They're normally pretty cheap and they're really fun 
primary source to have around. Um, one of my favorite objects that I have in my book collection, well, is this. I don't know if you can see this, but this is Clothing Selection by Mary Lou Shacker, who is my grandmother. Um, and she, this is her school assignment actually, from high school I believe, where she chose clothing. She cut out from patterns clothing that would look good on her. And I've always wanted to do a video on these manuals and specifically my grandmother's school assignment. Um, but that would involve a lot of research, which I do not have time to do at the moment. I have like four videos right now that I'm doing research for. And you're like, Maggie, I've been putting out any videos. I'm like, editing is my sticking point in the process. I have a lot filmed. I have a lot in the works. I just sitting down to edit. Okay, so these are going to go back into the bookshelf, probably on the second to last rung, because I know that they're all together. All right. The next category, there are a couple more categories than I'm thinking of, but the next category that's probably going to be the easiest are my museum collections guides and or um, guidebooks. So I tend to collect guidebooks when I go to museums or historic sites because I like to remember what's in the collection and what I saw there, and it's just the easiest way of doing it. I'm not really a big journaler or photo taker, I just like to buy the info so I can read it later. Um, and also, 20th Century Designers is going to be a category as well. I have a lot of those books. And sort of the other category that I like call extant pattern books, which are books that have patterns in them either from historic garments or conjectures of patterns from historic garments. And I can do an entire video on those because I did an entire project on those. So let's start sorting. Oh, this is also a um, primary source, I guess. It's from the 20s, so I'll put that with the other ones. We have two books that I got in the UK, Agatha Christie from 1940 and a Macbeth from Penguin Shakespeare. Those are going to go in non-fashion history books. Another category worth noting are textile conservation um, practice or theory books. So this is one, this is Living, Persons, Living Pictures Missing Persons, which is all about costume mounting. So this book, I got this over the summer. This is 300 Years of Fashion, um, Fashion Forward, 300 Years of Fashion, published by Rizzoli. <laughs> Take a knee here. Um, and this is the fashion collection from the museum, what is it called? It's a French name that I'm probably gonna butcher. Uh, the collection's Musee, Musee des Arts Décoratifs in Paris, Décoratifs. In Paris, I've been to this museum and it is wonderful, um, but I had never seen this book before. It's pretty expensive, but it's a good, it's a solid, like full collection sort of book where they take you through the history of fashion with objects. Like here's a bar suit. And I just love um, books like this because one, it tells me the highlights of the collection um, at a glance, but you also get really high quality photos of all of these different garments. Granted, I don't love the photos in these books. They're kind of dramatically lit for my personal taste. I prefer just kind of a solid, like straight up shot, but there's a metal in V&A. Um, so I know I talked about collections books in my previous video, but this is a good new one that I came across. So this is a reprint of the Rickman's Guide, which is one of the first um, sewing manuals, so I'm going to put that with my sewing manuals, even though this is a reprint. I also have a few textile books. Selling Silks is one of them, um, but mostly just about straight up textile, so those are all going to go together. Of course, this is a new one I just got as well. It's not a new book, but it's new to me. Uh, textiles America by Florence and Montgomery. Florence Montgomery. This is a kind of classic text for textiles, especially American textiles, and is definitely one to pick up if you're interested in, in the subject. It's like it's like the book that's been written on the subject. There is a revised edition um, with Linda Eaton as well, so it's a good one. 
is also a book that I picked up from the last video. This is Old English Costumes, a sequin of fashions through the 18th and 19th centuries. And this is one of the first exhibition catalogs of a costume um, show. I'm forgetting exactly, but it was um, the Victorian Al Albert Museum in South Kensington. Um, and it's a selection from the collection of Mr. Talbot Hughes. And essentially this is a book of models in the early 20th century, I think this is um, 1911, wearing um, historic clothes. Obviously that's not something we do anymore. I have an entire video about Kim Kardashian doing it if you're interested, but these are wonderful historic photographs of models wearing these historic clothes. So this is historic in and of itself. This was the exhibition guide that was purchased there and it's real grubby. It needs a good, needs good clean this book, but we're gonna put this with my quote unquote historical, like primary source, like old costume texts. This is a very hyper specific category, but it makes sense to me. And it only has to make sense to me. Oh, now I have a place to sit. Um, these of course are some of my favorite. I talked about these in my last video. Oh, this is the Viennese Fashion in Detail series. They published like a variety of these, um, most notably 18th century fashion, 19th century fashion, 20th century fashion, um, at least Japanese fashion and world fashions. There have been many different editions of those, but I have a smattering of them and these will all be going in a section together. So obviously I have 18th century and they also have underwear in detail. Oop. I have like things. I always have like little bits and bobs like wedged into books, um, like cards and stuff. So only fashion detail book that will not be going with the rest because this one is going with my underwear section. Cause I have an underwear section. This is another great reference book. This is Mary Thomas's Dictionary of Embroidery Stitches. Um, this is a classic guide revised by Jan Eaton. So this is sort of the book for identifying embroidery stitches if that's something that you need to do often. It's another fabulous book. I think I did a TikTok about this book a while ago, but it's uh, Dressed for the Photographer, Ordinary Americans and Fashion, 1840 to 1900. And this is a fabulous book. Not only does it talk about the intersection of fashion and photography, but there's a ton of fashion photographs in here of a lot of different types of people, types of bodies, races, genders, classes, etc. So it really gives you a, um, a really good look at what people were actually wearing and how they looked in their clothes. And that is incredibly important for both my textile conservation when I'm doing say mounting work, but also super important if you're doing any sort of historical research, so I highly recommend this book. It's chocked full of photographs. And it will be going in my photography section because I do have several books about photography and fashion. I also will have an art history section. So this is uh, Thomas Gainsborough and the Modern Woman. So we'll be going with my other painting books. I also, of course, have modern sewing manuals. So this is Couture Sewing Techniques. Um, I love this book. This is like advanced tutorials on like bound buttonholes and fancy stuff like that. So this will be going with my sort of more modern sewing guides. Fernanda Banner's book is also in there. So those go together. This book is wonderful. This is V&A, Madeline V&A by Betty Kirk. This is a very large book. Got a great deal on this book. This has excellent patterns of Madeline V&A objects, as well as being like one of the best books written about her. This book would probably go with um, 20th century designers. However, it's huge. So it's uh, gonna go on that shelf right over there. Same with this Charles James book. It's like way too big. So maybe that's where I'll put my 20th century designers is up on this top shelf here. So another one of my sort of research pods that I've been sort of, I have like different buckets of like research topics that I just kind of look into on a general basis. This is um, old like vintage books. 
talking about vintage style, talking about antique garments, and sort of looking at these in the way that people were advised to store and handle their antique garments and also um, how they were used. So I have a couple from the 70s that talk about upcycling antique garments, which is really interesting. Um, I don't really think you should upcycle antique garments because frankly they aren't they're not, they're not going to last very long. They're not made for that. Um, but these are super interesting just to understand what people were thinking and how they thought about antique garments. So this one is from the 2000s, so it's a lot more recent, but still interesting nonetheless. This is another one of those wild New York. This is another one of those wild like vintage collecting books from the 1970s. Oh, like it's just like people like wearing antique garments, which is wild. Just wild. Um, but this is also going in my vintage collecting. Vintage vintage collecting books. It's like really meta. I'm collecting vintage, vintage collecting books. Just saying, that's the point where we're at with this. I'm just gonna highlight a book I don't particularly love, um, but I keep it for just like a rounded out um, collection. This is Historical Pattern Archive Women's Clothing, 1870, I can't read numbers. 1837 to 1969. Um, this book is a bunch of extra, extant patterns, but they don't give you the year and they don't really give you a great rendering of the pattern, so it's not super usable. Um, the people who wrote this book I think were theater people, which makes a lot more sense. They're more interested in shapes, they're more interested in cuts, they're more interested in construction over someone like, say, Janet Arnold. By the way, I do have all my patterns of fashion. They're tucked in my TV console because they, I, I mean, I love those books, but they're the worst things to store. They're floppy and big, which makes them great when you're, you know, using them, but storing them sucks. Um, so they get their own little, little spot. I have all the reprints and all the originals because, again, this is where I'm at. So this book I would not recommend unless you like, there's something in here you really want to use, but I don't. I think there are other better um, pattern books, but. I keep this one because it is a good case of a book that I am not super fond of. But it goes with these ones right here. So we've also decided to make a category of books which is like 17th century and earlier fashion because I don't have a ton of that because I'm a textile conservator and I don't really deal with that material a lot because it doesn't exist sort of in my purview of like fashion exhibitions very very rare that i have to work with that so i do have some books but not a lot so they get their own section this is uh woven into the earth textiles from norse greenland there is also medieval garments reconstructed those two kind of go together um, morgan donner a while ago did a reconstruction from these two books um so if you're interested in that i'll pop links down to that down below but that gets its own section the pre the 17th century and before um so another one i have to highlight handbook of costume by janet arnold this is one of, this is a really weird book. I love this book because this is all about the scope of dress history when she wrote this, which I think was in the 70s, 1973-ish. And it's all about like different costume collections and like different ways of going about things and like her process. And there's a great section on conservation in here, which I really, really love. Don't worry about this book. Um, it's not going to be as useful to you, but if you are a person who's really interested in what the study of dress history and sort of the landscape of the field was in the 1870s, this is great. It's also a ridiculously expensive book. And it's such an odd one. So if you were thinking about this book um, and you're a historical customer and you're not like into historiography, I would, you can, you can skip it. It's all good. It's also a really fun thing they have. Um, the Peterson's Magazine in February of 1896. Um, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I did magazine flip-throughs for a little bit, 
which I do want to bring back every once in a while and possibly if I ever start a Patreon, I don't know if people would be interested in that, but I am coming up to a point where I might need to start looking into doing that, so tell me if you'd be at all interested in a Patreon. We do fun stuff like flipping through magazines together. Um, but this one is from a hundred years before I was born, February of 1896, so I thought it'd be fun to flip through this um, for my birthday month. So I'm going to put this with my extant, or my historic material. I have a, quite a few antique magazines, so that's going with that. I don't know why it was hiding in general population, but this is definitely sp special collections. If you don't have this book, get this book. It's great. Cut a woman's clothes. It's a, it's a good all-rounder. Can't speak highly enough for the American Duchess guides to 18th century dressmaking and 18th century beauty. These are wonderful. I've made, I think, two projects out of this book now. Um, just very well done, easy to use. So highly recommend if you were interested in making your own 18th century dress. They also have patterns in here um, and step-by-step -step instructions. I'm gonna have this copy of Age of Innocence, which I was going to read on the subway and then I remember I don't read on the subway. But maybe I will, maybe I should start. This is another book. Okay. This is another book that I picked up for my pattern extant patterning project. It's a dress design patterns of various reigns of antique costume. It's just on Amazon. I really don't understand what this book is. If anybody has insight, please tell me. Um, but it's essentially just like a little bit of history of fashion, and then there are some patterns. But I'm. Um, I don't know if they're extant patterns or if they are just the kind of general shapes. I don't know. It's not super, super helpful. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book. Again, I keep it because it confuses me. And if anybody has insight into it, please tell me. So another, this was my first dress history book that I bought, Costume in Detail by Nancy Bradfield. People have opinions on this book, whether it is easy to use or not easy to use. I like it, um, partially for nostalgia reasons, but also because it's just, it does have a lot of the little details that you don't normally, um, that aren't normally pointed out in these books. And it's, it's worth having around, I think. And it's gonna go with my fashion detail series for the v because those are books I pull out a lot, because it's kind of a general all-rounder situation. Here's a book I don't really have. It's kind of a lone, on its lonesome. Vintage fashion knitwear. I think it's gonna go with my Vogue knitting, but I don't, I don't have a ton of books on knitting, which is weird, because I am a knitter. I mean, I do have like knitting pattern books, but I don't really have them here with me. Most of those are, I either got rid of, because I was never gonna use them, or are at my parents' house. <laughs> I have books at my parents' house, which is ridiculous to me. Um, then I have more, I have like five more boxes, I think. And one day when I have a house and I don't have to move every 24 seconds, um, I hope to have a big bookshelf with all of my books in there. And that will be so nice. These two books are also great. This is 17th century women's dress patterns, Susan North and Jenny Tiramani, and I believe, yes, Susan North and Jenny Tiramani, um, published by the V&A. If you want 17th century dress patterns or you're really into extant patterns, these are great. They're super, super detailed. They go into some of the oldest objects in the V&A collection in very precise detail. This is another interesting one. So this is a, I don't know if this is a kid's book, but the complete book of fashion history, style journey throughout history and the ultimate guide for being fashionable in every era. This book is full of fashion history myths. And it would be really fun to look through this book and talk about all of the sort of fashion history myths and misconceptions that are in this particular book. So I don't recommend this book necessarily, but it is interesting. Ow. 
hit myself in the eye with random things. This also doesn't really have a place to go, so I'm actually gonna put this with my random stuff category that I have yet to parse out. I also have several, several books on hairstyles, particularly 18th century hairstyles, um, of course American Duchess, but also this book, which you will hear me talk about in another video either recently or coming up. Um, and this one is currently, this is 18th century hair and wig styling by Kendra Van Cleef. This is currently getting its second printing. So if you want a copy of this book, get it now um, because it will go fast and it's a great book to have. So yeah, hair styling, which to be honest, I'm not very good at. Uh, I'm not very good at styling my hair in general. Almost better styling it 18th century style, which is saying something. Um, but yeah, these will go in my hairstyling section because I do have a couple of other ones. There are a couple of sections that are really big, particularly the textile section and my dress history section. So we're going to kind of split those up when we get to the bookshelf, I think. My hat making books are also going to go with the hairstyling books. By hat making book, I mean books, I mean hat making book. I think there's only one. Okay, I think that's everything sorted. It only took me like an hour. <laughs> Um, but there are a few things that I want to highlight before I start putting everything back. So we do have, these books are really great, well actually, skip that. This book is a really, it's probably my favorite if you're a person who is looking to get a book that is going to sort of bring you through dress history and give you the basics of dress history, I highly recommend How to Read a Dress, A Guide to Changing Fashions from the 16th to 21st century revised editions by Linda Edwards. It's the book for you. Um, it just sort of takes you through um, dress history with a few different extant examples and then shows you details of what the style points are for each era. It's really easy to read, really easy to understand, and if you just want one book that is going to give you the basics, this book's definitely the one. They also have How to Read Suit, which is a book I don't yet own, but hope to own in the near future. So this book is actually going to go with my really general fashion history books. Oh no, this will... And then these two, Reading Art and Fashion and Dress Detective um, by Ingrid Maida, Mida, Mida, um, and Alexandra Kim. These two are also really great sort of introductions to practice. Um, so these are gonna go with my textile conservation practice ones. And honestly, this one might as well. I feel like that's where it goes. So I'm just gonna quick go through what categories we have and then I'm gonna put them all back in bookshelf and then we're gonna do a little tour at the end. So underneath you, textile, embroidery, and lace books, those three categories are all going to be separated. So it's gonna be textile books, embroidery books, lace books. Then we have undergarments, 19th century undergarments, 20th century undergarments, some 18th sort of fashioning the body, sort of academic stuff. This is just a pile of more textile books that I didn't want to put underneath the camera. We have textile conservation, practice, and theory books. This pile is right by my feet, is all fashion collection books, so like museum collection books, highlights from museum collections, basically just books of pretty pictures of dresses. Then we have all of my souvenir guides and museum guidebooks. We have the other ones I wanted to talk about, my Dover books. Um, Dover Publishing is a publishing company, to my knowledge, that kind of reprints older material and sells it. So they have a lot of reprints of like fashion plates and dress cutting guides and stuff from the 19th century. And the, the, for instance, this one, authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques is just like a reprint of like a 19th century manual. So these are great if you really want sort of like really cheap primary source material stuff. Um, these range from like five to 
$24 depending on where you get them. So they are relatively inexpensive to a lot of other books in my bookshelf because a lot of these can get very expensive. And that's why I don't necessarily recommend if you are a beginning person who's into historical costuming or historical fashion just in general, I don't necessarily recommend running out and getting like all of the Janet Arnold's right away. You know, if you want to, great. If you have the money, great, but they are expensive. So if you want to dip your toes in, first I recommend How to Read a Dress. That's also pretty reasonably priced, but these Dover fashion books are also pretty good for the money that you're paying. Also go to used bookstores. <laughs> They're amazing. That's how I built this entire collection. I built this collection over a period of about five years now, five, six years. And really half price books has been my rock, my shining star in all of this, but also other used bookstores and just garage sales and estate sales and just knowing what you're looking for and looking for good deals. Cause a lot of these books I've bought for less than they are listed on online, but sometimes you can find them for really good deals online too. Just keep your eyes open. So keep it going. We also have sort of the dress and detail situation that we talked about. The uh, collecting fashion books, the vintage collecting fashion books, hats and um, wigs. This section back here is like all general dress history stuff, which I'm going to split up by 18th, 19th century, mostly 18th, 19th century. So I'm going to put it in order of relative time period. We have um, 17th century and older fashion. We've got two books on knitting. We've got a smattering of books on sewing technique and then also two books on dyeing. D-Y-E-I-N-G. Right? Dying? Yeah, not like, not like dying, dying. Then we have uh, photography books. <laughs> the smattering of, his, of fiction books that I have. We have sort of the historical, historical fashion books, which are just old, like 1920s, 1930s, 1940s books that I have found about historical fashion that I keep for just seeing what scholarship was like at that time. We have 20th century designers, which are going to go on top of the cube shelf because they're huge. <laughs> Most of them are really big. We have like two to three books on plastics and 20th century textile technology. And then the art books are behind me and I have another book on hats. Oh, and then right here are my extant pattern books. So I will see you in a few after I organize all of these and I will show you the finished product. Right, so let's just bring you through. So up here we have basically all of the books that would not fit in the rest of it. So we have our pre like 17th century and older and then we have some um, collections and then we also have the patterning fashion series and then these two boxes right here are antique magazines and patterns and then prints and photos and other kind of things. Moving down to the second shelf here, we have our primary source materials and my Godey's Ladies and my period, or my Petersons. Um, and these are my antique photographs that fit in there. And then we have the antique dress history kind of stuff. And then <laughs> costume and detail shoved up there. Um, and then sort of 20th century textiles, um, fashion collection kind of stuff. Down here on the third shelf, we have all of my corset and underwear books. Um, they all fit perfectly here. So I'm actually not a huge fan of storing books on the side like this. I much prefer them um, right side up. However, oh, my books are so tall. And so this is just a more effective storage solution to get them all in here. Or else they would all have to be on the top shelf. And that just doesn't really... Make a ton of sense. So that's why things are put on the side like this. It's because there are quite a few books that just are too tall for this um, bookshelf. But anyway, all of those. And then here we have some textile and lace books. And then over here we have photographs, hats, um, and wig styling. And then the Dover fashion books as well. And then the two books on dyeing. Moving down to the fourth shelf, we have 
all of my extant pattern books and also my sort of sewing books. And then over here we have 19th century and overall fashion history. And then back there we have all of my museum guide books. Down here on shelf number five, we have the vintage dressmaking books. Then we have needlepoint and textile books and then more like oversized um, needlework and textile books right here and with a couple of 19th century fashion books on top. And then down here on the bottom we just have um, 18th century and Regency fashion history books and then all of my fiction books as well. Moving on to the little bamboo tower we have 20th century designers and then a couple of other books that are just oversized up on top. We have my record collection and then here we have books on fashion plates and my art history books. And then down here at the bottom we have textile conservation and then the vintage collecting fashion books. So I hope you enjoyed this more informal video just reorganizing my bookshelf. Hope you enjoyed seeing all the books that I have and a little bit more commentary on some books that I think are interesting and some to steer clear of. Um, if you would like a more detailed look into some of these books, the accent patterning books, etc, etc, I would love to make those for you. Just tell me what's interesting because honestly I could make a video about any of these. Um, and check out the old video if you are interested in sort of more detailed advice on um, these fashion books. So. Anyway, that's it for today. This video is probably super, super long, but if you want to follow me here, you can of course, of course hit the subscribe button. You can hit the like button if you like this video, and you can go and follow me on TikTok and Instagram, both at Costume and Conservation. Otherwise, I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.